to receive an honorary degree is Alex Smith. Alex Smith is well known to University of Utah fans. He is the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, a University of Utah graduate and a generous philanthropist. Before playing professionally, Smith posted a 21-1 record as quarterback for the U football team, leading them to postseason victories in 2005's Fiesta Bowl and the 2003 Liberty Bowl. He was also a first-team Academic All-American, the 2004 Academic All-American of the Year, and a first-team All-American and a Heisman Trophy finalist. Smith earned a bachelor's degree in economics in just two years with a 3.74 GPA and began work on a master's degree before being drafted. In 2007, he started the Alex Smith Foundation and the Alex Smith Guardian Scholars Program, which helps send foster teens to college. 23 of the 30 teens who have received scholarships since 2007 have since graduated, and many are now working toward graduate degrees. Alex Smith has a passion for education, which he attributes to his father and mother. Will Alex Smith please rise, and will Trustee Kevin Rowe and Dr. Sylvia Torti, Dean of the Honors College, please escort him to the podium. In consideration of your tremendous success as a mentor, philanthropist, and role model, and for bringing distinction to this university as an alumnus through your willingness to share your talents and passion for education, the University of Utah, with the approval of its Board of Trustees, presents Alex Smith with the honorary degree Doctor of Humane Letters. And once again, congratulations to all of our honorary degree recipients. It is now my honor to introduce our commencement speaker, who will deliver his advice to the class of 2014 in person. We welcome Dr. Alex Smith. Doesn't that sound great? As our commencement speaker. Alex? I am so honored to be back on campus at this incredible university on such an important day for all of you and your families and loved ones. So thank, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> President Pershing and the entire Board of Trustees, thank you for allowing me to speak today. And thank you for recognizing me with an honorary doctorate. You know, I was thinking this upcoming season with such a common last name like Smith, that I might actually put Dr. Smith on the back of my jersey. <laughs> but more importantly, I can now prescribe advice to you because I'm a doctor. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been almost 10 years to the day that I graduated from the U. And I've had many ups and downs over the course of that time. And there's really three concepts that I've learned and relied on uh, over those years. They are one, identify my weaknesses. Two, embrace the new. And three, letting go of what I cannot control. When I graduated from Utah, I was headed into the biggest job interview of my life, the NFL draft. As you can imagine, I wanted so badly to impress. I wanted to be perfect. I tried to be the perfect draft prospect. In my meetings with the coaches and executives, I tried to be the perfect interview. At the combine and at my workouts, I tried to be the perfect player. I tried to promote my strengths and conceal my weaknesses. And 
on paper, I kind of succeeded. I was the first pick in the draft. <laughs> yeah. And with that, I inherited this big, shiny trophy that I carried around and had one word engraved on it, and that was anxiety. <laughs> you see, the, the problem was, and this is the point, I felt like I had to be perfect to justify my draft status. I became my own worst enemy. I constantly stressed for others' approval and worried about what they were thinking. I felt like I couldn't even make the smallest of mistakes. And then when I did make a mistake, I agonized over it. This became a paralyzing cycle. I became cautious. I was tentative. My entire mindset became, don't screw up. Literally, I would tell myself, don't screw up. Don't screw up. Don't throw an incompletion. Don't throw an interception. Don't fumble. Don't drop the snap. Don't line up under the guard. Like, that's what I would tell myself. I was young, and I let my insecurities and own self-doubt get the best of me. I worried about others' approval. The result was I was stressed, I was exhausted, and I was full of anxiety. And most importantly, I was completely unproductive. My first prescription, we are not running for most popular. Instead, I encourage you all to run for most respected, unless Ray Lewis is chasing you. And then I encourage you to run for your life. I, uh, I recently had the opportunity to get to hang out with UFC champion George St. Pierre. Uh, for those of you who don't know George, he's a world-class mixed martial artist. Uh, some would even regard him as maybe the best ever. And uh, after getting to spend some time with him, one thing really stuck with me. It was how much time George and his team spend evaluating his own weaknesses. I'd always imagined that they'd spend all their time and energy focusing on their next opponent a lot like we do in football. Instead, George spends his time targeting his own weaknesses. He isn't insecure about his abilities or who he is. Instead, he's honest with himself and he embraces the challenge of his own shortcomings. This is a direct quote from George. I always train with better wrestlers than me, better boxers than me, better jujitsu guys than me. When you train with people who are better than you, it keeps challenging you. By challenging me, it makes me better. Failures and setbacks are inevitable for all of us. I encourage you to embrace the challenge of your own imperfection. Embrace your journey towards your own potential. It wasn't until I stopped worrying about my own validation and finally refocused my energy on things I could actually change that I finally grew as a person and a professional. And speaking of growing, my parents, our parents, can be some of the best coaches of our lives. In fact, let's all take this moment now to thank our parents and family members who have helped us be here today. Okay, now that we've had that nice moment. I can now tell you how my dad traumatized me my senior year of high school. <laughs> he was the master of making me embrace the new. You see, when I was in high school, my dad also happened to be my principal. Yeah. And one of the perks of my dad principal was that he got to make my schedule. So my senior year, when all my buddies had one or two classes and spent half their time off campus hanging out, having fun. I had a completely full schedule and one of the classes he signed me up for was competitive speech. Now, next to snakes and heights, public speaking was pretty much one of my biggest fears. I was literally more comfortable throwing passes on third down than I was getting up in front of people. But he made me do it. I had to embrace the new. And I'm glad I did, because little did I know, 15 years later, here I am speaking to all of you. <laughs> On a side note, he had also signed me up for these rotary speech competitions. And uh, part of the criteria for these competitions was that it had to be an original oratory. 
uh, meaning you had to write the speech as well as give it. And uh, funny story, true story, the topic for my speech was overpaid professional athletes. <laughs> You know, I can remember well coming up to Utah, to the U for the first time, and uh, everything was new. I can remember moving into the dorms and uh, same thing, you know, a, a brand new experience. Remember well going up to the Heritage Center for the first time and eating, and uh, same thing, didn't know a soul. And uh, mind you, this was pre-smartphone era, so I couldn't do the old pull my phone out and pretend like I have all this stuff going on. <laughs> so. You know what, you, you look up, and I realized that everybody else was feeling the exact same way. We were an entire room full of new, and I just needed to have the courage to get up and walk across the room and make a connection. Because there's one thing that's certain in life, there will always be cycles of new. First dates are new, job interviews are new, grad school is new, marriage and parenting is new, Having seven offensive coordinators in seven years is new. <laughs> we can never fully plan our future, so don't try. And how many of you graduates know what you want to do today for the rest of your lives? I know I didn't when I got my diploma. And that's really okay. I encourage you all to embrace what life throws at you, no matter how uncomfortable or daunting it might seem. Let's all have the courage to walk across the room and make a connection. And speaking of seven, offensive, seven coordinators in seven years, I really have had the opportunity to play for some extraordinary coaches. None better than my coach here at the U, Urban Meyer. Yeah. Now, Coach Meyer used to always tell us this. If what you want is different than what you have, then you need to change what you are doing. Let me say that again. If what you want is different than what you have, then you need to change what you are doing. Now, Coach usually said this right... Oh. <laughs> coach used to say that right before he asked us to do something really crazy. But he was right. If we wanted to be, I don't know, the first school to break down the BCS, we couldn't just keep doing the same old thing. It's something that's really helped me over the years. It's actually something I tell myself every time that little voice in my head tries to get me to take the easy way out. My second prescription, embrace the new, no matter how uncomfortable, and make it work for you. You know, honestly, when President Pershing and the university called me up and asked me to give the commencement address, my first reaction was, Absolutely not, no way. <laughs> Why would I want to subject myself to something I fear so much? Public speaking. But thanks to my dad principal, this is no longer new to me. And that's the funny thing. When we embrace the new, we tend to conquer our fears. I told you that one of my fears is public speaking. But you want to know what my worst fears was? And it actually came true. I could tell you guys about it, but honestly, I think it'd be better if I just showed you. So, if everybody could please stand. Please stand up. You guys are going to have to trust me here. We're breaking the mold. <laughs> now, on the count of three, I want you guys to all boo me as loud as you can. <laughs> hey, even you folks behind me and in the orchestra, it'll make it feel like a stadium. Now, I want you to really boo me. Pretend I'm Bronco Mendenhall or... <laughs> what's their QB's name? Taysom? Taysom Hill. Now, don't do it yet. I'm going to count to three, and then we'll start. And then, when I go like this, stop, okay? And have fun with it, okay? Yell out some of your other favorite QB names. I don't know, a Manning, a Brady. If you're feeling really creative, a Kaepernick. Stop, stop, stop. You guys over here, I want you guys to yell out, you're a bust, as loud as you can, OK? 
okay? And you guys over here, I want you to yell out, you ruined my fantasy football team. <laughs> okay, are we ready? Here we go. One, two, three, go. Yes, good, good, good. Thank you, thank you. Us. Come on, yes. Good, good. I like it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and, and stop. That was good, you guys can all sit. Thank you. That went better than I expected. You guys are good at that. You guys over here with the, uh, you're a bus, that's good, but really point at the person when you're saying it, it gives it more direction. All jokes aside, that really happened, except times it by about 10. Imagine 80,000 people tearing you apart. And the heartbreak is, this was a home game. <laughs> These were the very same people I was trying so hard to impress. Because you see, in this safe setting, I can control the booze because, well, that would just be awkward if you booed me off the stage at your commencement. <laughs> but in the real world, we can't always change the booze and applause. And in one of the most challenging moments of my life, it hit me and brings me to my third prescription. Accept what you cannot control. We can only control how we react and we respond. And that complex but so simple idea helped me survive. In fact, it actually gave me peace of mind. And it's truly why I am here today. Because it was a few years later, and I had thought I had silenced all of those boos. I thought I had silenced all of my critics when I really got tested. I thought I'd put all those hardships early on in my career behind me. And now I was on track, so close to the success that I'd always dreamed of. We were in the midst of a Super Bowl year, and I was playing the best football that I had ever played, and I got benched after getting a concussion. I was so close to the ultimate validation of my sport, the Super Bowl, and instead I watched it pass me by from the sidelines. In fact, the only time that I actually set foot on the Super Bowl field was for the coin toss because I was still technically a team captain. What I want you to all understand is this. We're all going to strive for success and I hope you all achieve it. But the truth is, at some point, you're gonna find yourself on the bench and you're gonna have two choices. One, you can sit and sulk and feel sorry for yourself or you can accept what you cannot control and you can refocus your energy preparing yourself for the next opportunity life brings you. If I had not taken my own medicine, I know I probably wouldn't be here today. I know I would not be a Kansas City Chief, and I certainly wouldn't be a doctor. <laughs> and when we leave here, we all have a new season ahead of us. And in the beginning of that new season, in our own unique way, we're gonna get to the field or graduate school, or new city, or new job, and we're gonna plan. We're gonna huddle up, and we're gonna call a play. We're gonna get to the line of the scrimmage, and we're gonna check the defense. And then a funny thing's gonna happen. Things are not going to go as we planned. In fact, I can promise you two things are going to happen. One, things will not always go as we planned, and two, how you react and respond to the boos and applause is the only thing you can control. So, identify your weaknesses and make them strengths. Embrace the new and have the courage to walk across the room. And put your faith over your fears. They both can exist together. From one University of Utah graduate to another, congratulations, class of 2014. Now give yourselves a hand. I don't want to hear Kaepernick or your bus.
Nice. Awesome. Now let's all go have a great season. Thank you. That was amazing. Now you can see why we were sure he should be Dr. Smith. <laughs> Alex is an exemplary role model and one of our most distinguished alumni. He is having a positive impact on the world, not only because of what he does, how well he throws the football, but because of the person he is. Obviously, we are extremely proud of him. Thank you so much for joining us today. University.